Welcome to Disney's Vero Beach. Today is Monday, January 25th, 2021, and last night was our first night here. This direction is basically on both sides of the road very expensive neighborhoods that are like really buffed like even looking to the side you can't even see oh, it, past the vegetation to see the houses it, it's like all one big neighborhood I think yeah so we're headed back towards Disney Vera Beach Resort gonna go past and see what's out in that direction which would be north. A lot of it is this John's Island private neighborhood. Like this side and another gatehouse and more on this side. So there is the um, public beach access right beside um, the Disney Vero Beach Resort. Drop off shore, break rip currents. So they have a nice little walkway and some benches to look out over the water. And shipwreck treasure. What is this? Is this some type of little antique store? Or is this, there's picnic tables. Is that somewhere to eat? Well, they do have a place to eat here. Oh, Tides Water Sports. Ah, uh, check out the fish mailbox. Beach Bites is what that was called. So right now we are on this tiny little strip. Like water on both sides. Now we can see the water over here, but oh, this side our houses so i just saw like the ultimate where back there where there were only one row of houses on the beach and all they have to do is cross the street and they got a dock on the intercoastal on right within easy easy walking distance of their house that is the setup this is this is awesome all tom can say is i would not want to be here to um, during a storm. Oh, but these docks behind these houses oh my gosh. are awesome. Awesome. Yeah, now we're even a smaller strip. Look at that all concrete house there being built. Whoa. Sebastian Inlet State Park. Treasure Museum? Yes, that's actually on my list of something I wanted to do. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I'm kind of going to head up toward the inlet and then we can come back and go on to the Jungle Museum and the Treasure Park. Like, there's so much green right here. Whoa! So we went quite a ways in that direction and there's just nothing down there but houses. 
so we're gonna head back over this bridge and check out like one of these little state park areas so actually before we hit the bridge we're gonna check out Sebastian Inlet State Park we need to share the road with bicyclists and golf carts turtles and runners I know it's kind of backlit you can't see that there you go we're turning around because it's eight dollars a vehicle or something else I don't know so we wouldn't be here long enough to constitute that so maybe another day Pelican Island National Refuge Road subject to flooding. Oh my. I guess we're gonna pull over right here. There's a vehicle coming. We are at the Pelican Refuge. This was the first national preserve in the US. This is like the very first trail we came across. It was near the bathrooms. Um, so, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, did I, oh, I didn't mention that in the car. Somebody else had started it first and then like he came in on it. Like, yeah, like he made it legit, Roosevelt did. Um, ooh, let's get some little pamphlets here. Ooh, we have a bird list. And that one looks touched, so I'm going in the back here. Oh, this gives us an idea. So we came in here, we're here, and we saw that there was a lot more other ones. So that's a two and a half mile, two and a half mile loop. And where are we? Like the little loop that we're getting ready to do. That would be the oh, oh. That says you are here. Yeah, no, we're, oh, this is the loop we're on. Ooh, two yeah. and a half miles. Yeah, that sounds good. I thought there was more. There's like three other loops, and it's not showing it. Historic Jungle Trail, hmm. which we just turned off of right here to that parking area. And it goes back and yeah. goes where. Ooh, Roosevelt Island. Okay, yep. Yeah. So America's first national wildlife refuge. I called it preserve, but whatever. To each their own. Ah, and I did not know that in 1909. Roosevelt issued a second executive order enlarging the refuge. The expansion included three mangrove islands that brown pelicans sometimes nested on adjacent, adjacent to Pelican Island. So, did it tell us, is it an oral one or what? It's it just gives you info. The, it's the brochure and map. Oh, uh, okay. Scan this, get, a, get the brochure and map. Okay. is very naturous. <laughs> it is. I'm going. Are there ticks in Florida? <gasps> There's not, right? I can point. tell you this is the first. I don't think I've ever been like on a Florida trail like this in my life. Like this is totally new territory to me. That's why I was like, are there ticks? Because that's just something I can't stand are ticks. <laughs> And we are coming across. Hey, oh, this is the road that we came on. Yeah. Looks like these bicycle thingamajiggies haven't been used in a while. Yeah. What? No hunting? Oh. You're not funny. Oh my gosh. This looks like, I don't know, a dragon with its mouth open and its tongue is sticking out. 
who else sees that comment below it's a two and a half mile loop which isn't that long but you know i mean we're gonna be out here for a little while however and i'm not saying she's not stopping and looking at interesting dragon's mouths and stuff <laughs> like this but if she does that we will be here till midnight <laughs> He's like, she's stopping already. This is such a hard decision. <laughs> Which way do we go? Left or right on the loop? I don't know. Which way do we start? If you're to believe. Ooh, there's ookie water right there. If I'm to believe what? Say, to me there's there is an indication of which is the proper direction well just because I think all hiking signs they're facing this way what should we do people comment clockwise or counterclockwise do you do the Canada pavilion first or do you do the Mexico pavilion first depends on whether or not you're in the mood for tequila <laughs> Which way are we going? I, you know, the hikers are pointed that way. I guess that would be my call. Okay, well then we need to go the opposite way because we're not doing what everybody else does. It's like the girls. It's like they, they bring out two outfits. When, right? when Langley was still at home, she would bring out two outfits and she said, which one do you like, Tom? And I'd point at one and she said, okay, good. I'm wearing the other. Exactly. This way it is. I heard something right here. So we'll keep walking. <laughs> I just heard something else. I happened to look down and there is a rock that's been marked with either a purple X or a purple cross. What is your commentary on that? Looks like a purple lowercase t to me. I'm amused by all of the uh, little uh, Bermuda runners trying to take over the trail here as we go along. Somebody has actually walked barefoot through that mess. I'm going to get the big camera because you're not going to be able to see it. And I'm going to take pictures of the footprints. No way in H I would do that. I mean, they may have came in off of a boat maybe? Because there's really nowhere to like really walk through here. And it comes along with a little place to uh, sit here along the water's edge, which is uh, quite pleasant. And houses and docks and stuff in the far distance. So this is the second like blue thing that I've seen. The other has been like on the trail. So people are placing them here. This one has a little heart and a smiley face. They're like painted rocks. And I know I've heard something about people putting painted rocks there in certain places. Like, am I supposed to take it? And it gives me blessings or am I supposed to take it and replace it with another one comment below 
on what I'm supposed to do. Like, it's not going to happen this time because obviously I left them there. But for future reference, if I see painted rocks in random places. Just found another one with an X on it. So does the X mean that somebody else found it and put an X on top of it? Is that what you're supposed to do with the rocks? We're trying to figure out how much longer we have of walking. Started here. We think we did all of this and there was a cut off trail to the right and I can only see that being like right here. So we're almost done. Yeah, because we're like losing daylight. So anyway, I see I'm going to insert a picture from right here. It's taken me everything I have not to take this one because it is so darn pretty. Oh, that lost it. So I'm actually having a lot of fun. Ooh, there's a big crap. Um, looking for these little rocks. Um, whoever put them here, now that I've seen a, more than a few and know to keep looking for them, I'm actually having, it's almost like a little scavenger hunt. So there was two close together here. This one, and then there is a purple one way over here. It appears as though we went in the right direction. Let's just say that first. Because it's. Oh, never mind. It's facing both ways. <laughs> that we have a half a mile left. So, this last half mile, we are finding them closer and closer together. And it means it's going slower and slower on the hike. <laughs> You hear them. This one's really pretty. Close together. That one, that one. Like I am constantly stopping to take pictures and we're constantly losing daylight. Oh my gosh. See what I mean? Here's another one. Thank goodness. The line of rocks ends after this next one right what here. What our two and a half mile hike looks like. <laughs> so if you're wondering what kind of average speed we go on on our hikes, um, <laughs> insert comment below on what you think our average speed is. And numeric answers are not so, allowed. So could be one dropped like Accidentally, but then I come find this one. So maybe they are placed Since there's no rocks around here oh, There's one No, there isn't yeah, They painted it to look like a leaf. Oh brother <laughs> Since there's no rocks around maybe they're just dropping them. Yeah, cuz look Tom's if you see where Tom just pointed Here's another one
So we have reached the technical end of our journey here. And, and I would like to state for the record that uh, where we parked, there was a couple next to us uh, getting on their bikes and getting ready to go for a ride. As we were on the approach trail here, we ran across uh, two ladies who had just come off this loop. But we just went an entire two and a half mile loop here and did not see, hear nothing, another human being the whole time. Heard a few birds that scared uh, one of us. I won't say which one, but it wasn't me. Um, and uh, yeah, it was very relaxing. And it was at a nice, um, measured, relaxed pace, maybe? Is that the word? We were thinking the whole trail might be like this little cut through from the parking lot, which was a little more naturous than uh, we might have uh, really wanted. But yeah, it was a nice, wide, well-maintained trail. And... Uh, Flatter than a pancake, that's for sure. So uh, I would not call it the most difficult hike I have ever Stroller attempted. Stroller friendly, by the way. Stroller friendly. You all might find this hard to believe, but that was not the first thing about the trail that had come to my mind. Tom asked, just asked his phone what time sunset would be. 5.57, it is 5.32. Oh yeah, losing daylight, glad we're done have no idea how long it took us. Not a clue. Next time we'll have to time something so like this. we're going this. in the opposite direction of the out to see where the entrance to another trail is for future exploration purposes. And actually our navigation system says jungle trail, but look, it's like in the middle of nowhere. And we're still in the middle of nowhere. It seems to be pretty accurate in that respect. Yes, it does. So we have came up to some crossroads. Can't go that way. There's a gate. And straight, I have no idea what that is, but it says all the other trails and the butterfly garden are this way. Okay, that was so interesting that we will definitely be back to um, experience the Pelican Overlook and the other trail. So now we are headed out and we will be in the search of dinner. <laughs> that's, oh my gosh, that's so funny! after going through nothing like we were really getting concerned like there's just not any place to eat we finally come across mulligan's beach house you can also get fishing charters here by the way breakfast $2.99 yeah this is just the kind of place you want to eat when you're at the beach think this is gonna do good our seat is absolutely amazing look what we get to look at and we're not allowed to feed the birds that's what that yellow sign says do not feed the birds this is awesome so glad that we came across this place oh look we even have things painted murals on the ceiling and if it got cold, we would be right by the heater. Got a bar over there, and it just wraps around. There's basically almost all their seating is waterfront. They have a huge menu. Like, all these are like drinks and beach cocktails. And then we have salads and appetizers, a raw bar, beach house bowls fried stuff, sandwiches, burgers, lobster, and Reubens. Of course, tons of seafood, steak and chicken, pasta, and dessert. 
and a happy hour. So Tom got the grouper, macaroni and cheese, and what did they call the chips? They have a special name for it. They're like kettle chips. Some beach, beach house trips, chips or something like that. And then I got the macaroni and cheese, the black beans and rice, and the mahi. He got his blackened, I got mine grilled. Around the run today